Wow, it's great to be with you today. Um, I'd like to thank Lou and all the other organizers of the Restoring Freedoms Conference for this opportunity to be here. And I'd also like to thank all the other speakers and all of you for attending. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Certainly we all want to restore freedom, so this is a wonderful cause. Uh, I think the last time I was in Gold's Ferry was, the, was about 10 years ago for the Libertarian Party Convention here, so it's great to be back. Lou asked me to speak to you today about my work with the TSA resistance movement and brief you on current efforts to oppose airport tyranny. And I will cover that, but I also want to show you how I think that fits into a bigger picture of principled libertarian activism. We Won't Fly has been one of our most successful media operations. Um, it's been a great opportunity to get a libertarian message out there, but it's just been one of many of the libertarian activities that our group has been involved in. I discovered the Libertarian Party during Harry Brown's campaign. Uh, this was, I guess, in the late 90s, the first time he ran for president. I was flipping channels, and I hear this guy, he says he's running for president, and he's saying stuff I agree with. I'm like, whoa, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, you know, he, he was 100% consistent, and back then, libertarian candidates for president were real libertarians. Uh, so they weren't trying to camouflage themselves, uh, they weren't uh, failed Republican-like candidates, uh, they weren't trying to win votes by sounding like everybody else. Um, if, if I had turned in, turned on to another politician, maybe, you know, if they had been talking about their new idea for a national sales tax or a key military alliance with Israel, I would have definitely kept on turning the channels. But Harry Brown offered something it was something incredible. It was a radical diversion from the status quo, and I found that very appealing. Uh, he offered a vision for a world where peaceful people can be left alone, where we can keep the fruits of our labor, where we can travel unmolested. He laid out the non-aggression principle, and to me, that really clicked. Uh, I'm just one of the millions who discovered libertarianism from Harry Brown. And I don't think I've ever met anybody that has discovered, discovered libertarianism from Bob Barr. Uh, it was Harry's advocacy for consistent libertarian principle that made him a huge success. I didn't have any idea at the time, but, it was, but Harry Brown really helped me to begin a very interesting journey of philosophy and libertarian activism. For the past decade, I've been involved in all sorts of libertarian projects. We take on the IRS, the Federal Reserve, eminent domain, the drug war, the war machine, you name it. Uh, but no matter what the particular issue is, we, we always try to attack it from an uncompromised, 100% libertarian uh, position. And I believe this is the very key to our success. And I want to share some of that success with you and hopefully give you some ideas and maybe a confidence boost for when you are out there promoting freedom. Uh, if you've been to the Montgomery County Hospitality Suite, you may have seen our banner with the Statue of Liberty. Emanating from the torch is a beam of light, and this beam of light represents the guiding libertarian principle that illuminates our path. I've heard from some, from some small-minded libertarians that if you want to succeed, you have to be moderate, and don't scare people with this pure libertarianism, they say. They want to gently nudge the establishment. They talk about reform instead of repeal. Sometimes it seems like they actually want to perfect the state instead of abolishing it. They think it's important to look and sound like the respectable establishment personalities. But my experience is exactly the opposite. I've discovered that it is the unwavering libertarian position that people love. I'm going to give you a few examples, including my work with We Won't Fly. One of my first libertarian activities was right before the uh, current Iraq war started. And uh, one of my libertarian friends, Darren Wolf, and I, we decided we wanted to go to this rally. Clear Channel was having these rallies to promote the war. And we went to Valley Forge Park. There were 10,000 people there banging war drums. And Darren and me. And uh, we, we brought about 500 flyers with us, and we thought, you know, we're going to promote libertarian foreign policy. The, the, libertarian, the libertarian foreign policy of our founding fathers, which is entangling alliances with none, 
and on his friendship with all. Uh, we had this like crazy idea that maybe Congress should declare war before the bombing began. So. <laughs> this was a huge rally, and our flyers were gone in minutes. And we, we met one other person there who was there to support peace. It was a, a, a woman who was in tears because people had snatched the, her sign out of her hands and destroyed it. Uh, she was glad to find an ally. Uh, I don't think we were very effective in changing the minds of all of those bloodthirsty people. But we did get noticed by Pierre Robert, who is a, a prominent Philadelphia area radio host. And this was, I think this was my first major media interview. But what really, what made that happen, what made us be, get noticed is that we were differentiating ourselves from the crowd. We weren't trying to blend in. We weren't trying to tweak things. We, we had a, a principled approach. We wanted a, a constitutional declaration of war and just a, an honest discussion, at least, before this, this happened. Um, so it was a good example. You know, be different, stick to our guns, get noticed. Um, another early success for the Montgomery County Libertarians was, a, it was an open space initiative in Montgomery County. They wanted to take about $60, $60 million from tax victims and they wanted to buy development rights from all their buddies. Uh, so basically you couldn't build on your, on your swamp land if you were friends with the township commissioners, or the, the county commissioners. Um, the Democrats and Republicans loved this idea, but the Libertarians saw right through it, right? This is, this is a scam. Uh, so we began with some, some small demonstrations and a press release. We had virtually no resources. We failed miserably to block the project, but we did make the establishment squirm a little bit, and we made a lot of friends. And I learned a good lesson about media. Uh, one thing that the first thing that happened was uh, from one of our press releases, we get a we get a mention in the Norristown Times Herald. Uh, you know that's nice, but then the Philadelphia Inquirer reads that, and now they're reporting on us opposing this. I'm like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. That's that's good. Uh, then, ironically, the Wall Street Journal reads the Philadelphia Inquirer. Next thing, the Wall Street Journal is calling our Montgomery County Libertarians, and they want quotes. Next thing you know, our Libertarian views are on page two of the Wall Street Journal. Um, and again, it wasn't because we were advocating a modern approach. It wasn't because we were agreeing with the mainstream. It's because we differentiated ourselves, and we stood up for, for private property and individual freedom. Yep. When I ran as a Libertarian candidate for state rep, I, I found this video, it's a short video from Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. They mailed me this DVD, it was like 10 minutes. I thought, you know, I have a friend that shows short movies in a bar in Philly. I'm just gonna show that, why not? And for kicks, I sent out a press release. Well, sure enough, city paper reports on that. Look, Libertarian candidate, you know, opposing drug prohibition. Um, and I thought, well, that's cool, you know, city paper, somebody reads that. The funny thing was is that, uh, that the city paper article got noticed by Mother Jones, and then Mother Jones covered this. Just, just some you know, guy at a bar showing a DVD. Um, then the Mother Jones article got noticed by Utney Reader, which also reported on the story. So again, you just do some small thing, you just, just a, a token um, defense of a libertarian principle, and people actually take notice of it. So you, you really never know what's going what's to begin to, to snowball. Um, and it's funny how even hardcore statists come to the libertarians to help when they've had a bad experience with government. Um, we had a, a few years ago, I got a call from this woman in tears who politicians in Abington Township wanted to take the property of her mother for eminent domain. Hmm. And I talked to her, and after, after a short conversation, I knew I wanted to help her. I knew my libertarian friends were going to want to help. So, we didn't know what to do, but we started uh, We started a, an awareness campaign. We made some flyers. We, we held this demonstration uh, where we were promoting private property. Uh, we called them out of, as, as thieves that they were. We didn't, we didn't hold back. We let them know, you're thieves. You're taking something that's not yours. You're a thief. Uh, that's not what the Democrats and Republicans did. They beat around the bush. So uh, we even had a rally where we went to the houses of the township people that were supporting this theft. And in fact, I know a lot of you were there. We had a great time. We went door to door with a great crowd, and we called them out with megaphones and signs, and we really had a good time doing it. We made a lot of friends. Uh, of 
course, they were appalled by this. Later at the next township meeting, they were, they were, they were aghast that people might actually stand in front of their houses with signs and a megaphone. Of course, them taking somebody else's house is perfectly acceptable. So, uh, again, principled libertarian positions got us noticed. And at the time, it looked pretty grim. Uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of support from the community. We were making a lot of friends, but a lot of people were supporting this thing. But it took a couple of years, but eventually, Abington Township decided not to steal that woman's property. So it can take a while. It can take a while, but sometimes a persistent vocal minority can prevail. Um, in each of these examples, it was the promotion of libertarian principles that brought us success. It wasn't diluted, it wasn't a moderate approach, uh, it was consistent libertarian approach to differentiate us. Not only are our are ideas better, but they can be popular too. Um, our work defending dignified air travel has been our most successful libertarian event, uh, effort yet. Again, with a 100% hardcore libertarian approach. Um, now, I'm, I was going to tell you what the TSA is doing at the airport, but after that video, I think you got a pretty good idea. Um, the scale of what they're doing might actually surprise you. Uh, they are putting these scanners into airports. Uh, they're taking, they're using radiation to take new photographs, high resolution new photographs. They can tell if a man is circumcised, they can tell if a woman is menstruating. Um, it, you know, it's a horrible invasion of privacy. Uh, you can choose to opt out, and you can receive their, what they call euphemistically an enhanced pat-down, but according to the FBI definition, this would be a sexual assault. They put their hands between your legs and go all the way up, sometimes quite forcefully. Uh, they put their hands between breasts, uh, they, they feel genitalia, they put their hand in your buttocks, they even put their hands in pants of men, women, and children. It, it's just astounding that this is even tolerated at all. Um, millions of travelers have been searched in this manner, right? without consent, without search warrants, without probable cause. Um, it's just, I mean, you can, it's just astounding that people would even submit to this. So, um, they, the TSA has even admitted that the pat-down is actually a punitive measure that they want to use against people that opt out of the radiation scam. So, I've never enjoyed airport security, even before the TSA. I didn't think it was right for them to peek in my in my bags, but when they were when I found out they were going to peek under the clothes of my family, that was just more than I could bear. And that's when we started. We won't fly in 2010. Um, at the time, we had no idea what we were getting into. It started like many of our libertarian operations. Uh, I was pretty sure we'd make a stir in Philadelphia. Uh, I was expecting some, some obligatory press. Uh, my goal was really to raise awareness locally and maybe slow down these scanners, maybe block them if we could. Um, I wanted to see you know, what we could get going. Uh, I was inspired by folks like Michael Roberts, and Michael Roberts was a, is a courageous pilot. Uh, he decided when these scans came, to, um, the scans came, he decided, no, he wasn't gonna go through them. He walked off the job rather than submit. And I was very impressed by that. I was like, that's exactly what we need to do. We just have to refuse to cooperate with these people. Um, so it really seemed like a good idea. He advocated boycotting all airports that, that have these procedures. So that's basically this is the strategy that we adopted. And we planned a day of action, which later merged into National Opt-Out Day in 2010. Um, then something really weird happened. It's that the, the public was overwhelmingly supporting this libertarian view against the TSA views. Um, and I'm not used to that. In fact, we had so much support, I had to stop and reconsider my view because I'm so used to being a minority. Uh, this is weird. Um, the, the libertarian argument against the TSA had been out there for a long time. Uh, Becky Akers, Jacob Kornberger, these people had, done, had come out swinging against, against the TSA since day one. But it was this new scope and rope operation when they ramped that up and really got the public fired up. When these things started coming out on YouTube, they just exploded. And We Won't Fly uh, had a lot of success because we were sharing a lot of these stories and videos from travelers. Um, now we have reached the point where you know, just normal folks were begging the libertarians to protect them from the government. So that's when We Won't Fly took off. Mainstream media started calling us 
Uh, they're still calling us for commentary. And as, as media star libertarians, this became literally an all-you-can-eat buffet. Uh, but we had a web explosion, it blossomed into an old media explosion. For an example, we were having an informal sign-making party at our, at our bar. It's the kind of thing we might do anytime. Uh, we get together at the bar, we have some drinks, we make some signs. Uh, so I was a little surprised when the Fox affiliate called and said, do you mind if we send our reporter and camera crew to, to your thing? I'm like, well, how did you even know about that? You know? So we're like, okay, fine. Next thing, CNN says, well, maybe we embed our reporter and camera crew with you for the entire night. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You know? So, you know, that's just some libertarians in a bar making signs, so you know, things were a little weird. Um, I think it's safe to say that we had more national and international media interviews than the past two libertarian presidential campaigns combined. Literally hundreds of interviews across multiple continents, major networks too, not just the cable news. Um, we were even asked, we got to write a uh, guest editorial in USA Today. Um, the media attention was so heavy that the Philadelphia Inquirer wrote a story on the media uh, coverage. So they wanted to know why, why is this local guy on TV every night? So that was, that was kind of interesting. And even recently I got a, uh, I was contacted by someone making a college textbook that wanted permission to use an image from our website. And I'm like, that's interesting. So evidently we are now a textbook example, literally. <laughs> I'm just not sure what your textbook is in but So anyway, we didn't get this attention by having a modern libertarian view. Uh, we won't fly as looking for the total abolishment of the TSA. We don't advocate TSA reform. We're not about tweaking procedures. We don't care, we don't want better training. We don't want to know how much radiation is, is unhealthy during a virtual strip search. We call for the total elimination of the TSA. full restoration of travelers' rights to dignity and privacy. That's right. So this is the 100% libertarian view, and it resonates with a large segment of society. We don't have to water down our message or beat around.